I thought it might be helpful for those of you who only know Port Washington and this synagogue as it is today to reminisce for a bit as to what it was like when we arrived in 53 and shortly thereafter. By that time, the congregation claimed to have 75 families, and like most of the other things that it claimed, it was almost true. <laughs> we started out with maybe 25, 50 people, and we didn't reach 200 until quite a few years later, even though we would tell people we were a 200-person congregation. Well, in the very earliest days, there were maybe 20 or 30, very few. And uh, people were talking about having a building and where would it be and so on. And we had committees out working to decide on the proper location. But it is a little difficult today, taking a look at the congregation and the community, to imagine what it was like in those days. Again and again and again, it was improvisation, the will of good people, and the devotion of everyone who could manage it that helped the synagogue become what it was. I will never forget that first evening when I came up to the uh, fire hall uh, auditorium where we were to hold High Holy Day services. There was a crowd of people. Some of them were setting up chairs. Somebody had to set up the chairs. Somebody were, some were arranging the greenery. Some were arguing about how things could be arranged, and some were arguing about why the others were arguing. Uh, one of the th sights there just struck me as absolutely typical of what was going on. For there in front of this entire crowd was a man with a hammer and a box, and a miter box and a saw, and he was putting the finishing touches on a portable ark. It was Irving Katz, and what he was doing was making the portable ark which served this congregation for many years, for he and his family had been in something called the Benson Box Company, and making wooden boxes was how they, in fact, uh, were able to get the Sands Point. The greatest story is the story of the leadership we had. There are a lot of people whose names could be mentioned. But the story of Nat and Marjorie is a most unusual story. Just two stories about Nat. One, in the midst of the battle to win the right to purchase this land, we held a congregational meeting at 138 Bayview Avenue, which we were occupying, and it was a fierce and ferocious battle. It hardly had to do with real estate. It was as much uh, personalities and uh, tensions in the community and the fact that everybody was having trouble paying their first and second and third mortgages. And in the midst of that, all the vote was taken to purchase this land, and the vote passed by about a 60-40 split. Alas, I remembered that the Constitution said that we had to have a two-thirds majority. And in front of that very tense meeting, for a change, quietly, I walked up to Nat and said, Nat, the Constitution requires a two-thirds majority to purchase this property. Without blinking an eyelid, Nat said, you're right. And having just announced that the vote had passed, then proceeded to announce that in fact the vote had been lost and we couldn't buy this property. 